Joining us in studio to discuss the ongoing enforcement of immigration laws in Kenya is George Muse, who is the practice leader at Frogman Kenya. He's also an experienced immigration practitioner with over 14 years experience in public service, United Nations and corporate practice locally and internationally. George, good to see you. Welcome once again to Bottom Line Africa. Thank you, Jesse. I'm happy to be here. Yes. Now let's talk about the immigration laws in Kenya. As we well know, good immigration practice is a function of sufficient immigration force. It's also very important in terms of propelling policy as well as law. There has been a move by the Interior Ministry to actually um, perhaps cement the immigration laws in Kenya by rooting out immigrants who are illegally in Kenya. What's your take on this? Thank you, Jesse. I think um, to start with, it's important for the country to appreciate the fact that immigration is it's about uh, sovereignty. If you look at the constitution and what um, makes a state, you're looking at you know, the territory, you're looking at the citizenship and, and the people of that country. And the capacity for you as a country to decide who comes in and, and goes out. Mm -hmm. Therefore, having said that, I think it is important for us to trace where all this started. About three to four months ago, the Minister for Interior, um, Dr. Matiangi, did say that there were so many undocumented immigrants in this country and therefore announced a process of verifying the people that are in the country lawfully. And after that, uh, on giving the report, they found out that about 26, 27,000 people were on work permit and many others, you know, were not documented. And that brought to the fore uh, the fact that now they needed to reinforce immigration and enforce it a little bit better to make sure that it's either you're in the country lawfully or you, uh, you live. And that's what we are seeing. Um, I think it's a good thing because in as much as we, we are open to business and, in, and welcoming people to come here, we also need to know who is in the country and in what status they are in this country. Well, that's very important. Even as they continued to perhaps um, shed light on the immigration status of various foreigners in the country, there's also a process of digitizing the whole immigration process. Is that a good thing, I must say, right? It's, something, it's one of the best things that can happen. Um, for a long time, immigration has been manual, and you can imagine you are issuing documents, you are issuing passport, you are issuing, you know, permit and passes. So the, the the process of digitizing is one of the things that I mean, it's an amazing thing that has happened. But I do challenge the Ministry of Interior and Immigration to go the full, you know, throttle. Mm -hmm. We are seeing a bit of piecemeal. We we still have processes that are very manual. You can imagine sometimes opening a file is a manual process. It will take even up to, you know, 10 days, you know. Um, and even if you look at the issue rooms, like for instance, the ones issuing work permit and passes, they're still very manual. You have officers sitting there writing even up to three, 400, you know, uh, pieces of document every, every day. You can imagine the fatigue. If you have one of these officers out of, you know, they are sick or something, then there's a backlog. So I would challenge them to digitize because at the end of the day, that is where the future is going. I think it's a good effort and, and I, I congratulate them and I hope they will go the full throttle. Well, we definitely congratulate the Interior Ministry. As we still talk about that, about 26,829 permits were scrutinized in this revamped move to actually um, cushion the immigration policy or revamp it in Kenya. But there have been questions arising on perhaps is this ill-motivated in terms of targeting um, specific countries, in terms of targeting specific nationalities. Is this a question that warrants any debate? No, I don't think it does, Jesse, because it's, it's purely an issue of the immigration laws of the country. And I have followed the process, um, and I think the Department of Immigration has been very fair in terms of, you know, enforcing the law. If the law says that you need a work permit, there can never really be a debate. And um, the people that would complain, if you look at it, are the people that actually do not have the permit. In my view, the people that came and verified their work permit should not be, even be our focus. The focus is these other people that we find in our street uh, working in some companies but without this documentation. Those are the people that should concern us. Um, 
I think there have been a few misses here and there because you, you will appreciate the Department of Immigration is, is rather small. So the, the, the Inspector General of Police has also been brought in because the mandate of the police includes supporting other sister agencies in terms of enforcing. So you will find that um, in some areas it is the police that will be available to do some of these swoops and they are not as equipped in terms of knowing the immigration laws and, and documentation. So you might find a few people that are on proper document and maybe they are brought to, to immigration. And, and I think eventually what has happened is that when immigration officers scrutinize and realize these guys are properly here, they have let them go. However, if you really are here um, unlawfully, I don't think there's a debate in terms of enforcing the rule of law. Yeah, definitely no debate. But a debate that has rather also been sparked by this move is perhaps the... Kenyans are well educated as well as compared to the expatriates and the immigrants coming um, seeking job opportunities right here. Where does the line, where is the line drawn actually in terms of jobs that should be offered to Kenyans vis-a-vis -vis jobs that are set aside for um, various nationals coming into the country seeking job opportunities? Yeah, I think that's a good question. Jesse. For a long time, this country has been open, you know, mm -hmm. so fluid that um, there, there wasn't clear-cut, you know, uh, demarcations in terms of what jobs can be done by Kenyans, what cannot be done by a Kenyan. Unlike in some other countries, if you go to countries like Rwanda and a few countries like Nigeria and a few others, they normally give quota system and say, if you are employing Kenyans, then we need to see a ratio of maybe 20% to 80% of Kenyans. But in Kenya, the, that there isn't. I mean, for every application you make, you need to justify. I think that's the challenge. However. Is it really a bad thing to have people coming to Kenya? I don't think it is a bad thing. What we need to do is to balance so that where Kenyans really qualify, they should not be disadvantaged because they are Kenyans. And, and, and um, a lot of the times when investors come here, they would be allowed some few classes of permit to allow them to take care of their interests. It's a normal thing if you're sending your money somewhere, like even KCB, Equity Bank, if you look at the countries they are, they are in the region, you'll find Kenyans managing those branches. But also there's an issue of um, very many people from outside country coming to do very, you know, small jobs that Kenyans can do. That really has to be stopped. You know, like having people hawking, uh, cooking utensils in our streets around the country uh, or selling motorbikes as we've seen. Those are things that really we can cushion. Um, but also there could be... Um, some aspect, like for instance, if you, you have a Japanese restaurant and you're cooking, cooking sushi, you do not expect someone from Taraka like myself to be able to cook sushi. Mm -hmm. You might need a Japanese who may not necessarily be having a, a PhD, but they know how to cook sushi. Like if you open a hotel in, in London to cook ugali, you probably want to pick someone from, from Nairobi to do the ugali. Uh, but then that cannot mean we have so many people roaming our streets you know, running basic things like um, kiosk, uh, roasting maize, really that is a debate. And I know Kenyans are very bitter, yeah. especially looking at the, uh, the incidents where um, a national of a country was accused of insulting Kenyans and, and their president. I know Kenyans are very bitter about that. Um, but I am also urging that it has to be a balance. If you look at in Africa today, countries where people are running to, we have Kenya in the Eastern Africa region, we have South Africa. What is the common thread in those countries? They are the powerhouse of the region. Look at globally, look at the US. Everyone wants to go to the US, why? Because it has opportunities. Look at Europe, people want to go to the UK, why? Because it has opportunities. So I want to, to say, it is not entirely a bad thing when we see people coming to, wanting to come to Kenya. What we need to do as a country is therefore to say, how can we then tighten the weak areas in terms of the immigration law to enforce so that whoever comes into our country, we have record of these people and we know where we can find them when they need to be here. I think that is what we need to do. It's a balance, yes. Yeah, it definitely is a balance. And needless to mention, 
each and every country faces various challenges in terms of immigration laws. We can see what's happening in the United States, just perhaps to borrow a leaf. Um, Kenya, right now, you're talking about keeping a balance. That might be a challenge. And perhaps through your years of experience, what would be the best way to approach this? Because having Kenyans um, protesting against various individuals who are getting jobs that may be um, given to Kenyan nationals um, is not a permanent solution. It is not. Uh, there are several ways of doing this, Jesse. The first thing that we need to do, we need to ask ourselves, the East African community, for instance, and the president alluded to this when he was sworn in, said they need to be treated as Kenyans. If we can, for instance, agree as East African uh, state that our citizens can go across to each country, a big portion of the people we refer to as illegal immigrants would be, you know, not be illegal. Uh, the second group is, you know, Africans as well. You know, we are talking about Africa being f open for everyone. The, the deputy president in Rwanda the other day did say, we need to remove these barriers to trade, you know. Mm -hmm. If someone is able to travel across Africa easily, then it becomes easy. So you would also have Africans not being considered uh, illegal. Where I have seen a challenge is it's when we negotiate big projects. Say, for instance, SGR. Fine, China can fund us. But we need to strike a balance. When we negotiate this kind of project, we need to say, fine, we will allow you a portion of these people. But we should also be able to push. And that's where I, I think immigration uh, need to come in. We need to say, we will allow you to bring in 500 expatriates from China. You just have to choose the ones that you want. But the rest must be Kenyans. And also, we need to have a mix. Because what I have seen in terms of the balance, you can have a company that employs 5,000 Kenyans, but they are paid 10,000 all of them. Yeah. You could have one company that employs 10 Kenyans, but they are paid um, 5, 10 million. So it's an issue, it's a balance. I know companies that um, have Kenyans outside there that are in charge of a region, Europe or the Americans. It's a balance. We cannot say that um, we will stop people from coming, but we need to strike a balance in terms of what is our interest in this particular... Because like the, most of these project, mega projects that we are seeing, they are the ones that have really brought in. Because if you remember um, a few years back, when Kenya started you know, doing more of uh, China product and getting projects from China, then you, we started seeing a lot of you know, influx of people from China. Because what would, was happening is people would come undertake a certain project. But then we did not have mechanism of making sure that the same people left. So what happened is these people came, completed project A, but remained here to do project A, B, C, and D. So, so we need to have, and I, I think the, the government need to reinforce immigration. Immigration. Speaking of immigration, finally, as we conclude, um, the new immigration laws, perhaps how might it affect the individuals or foreigners who have already found a home in Kenya, have already found a work permit? Is it um, a good move to them and also taking a look at Kenyan's perspective? Actually, yes, um, the Kenyan immigration law are very old now. Mm -hmm. They... You know, after the new constitution, 2010, yeah. which is uh, seven, eight years back, in 2011, we had the Immigration uh, Act yeah. and, and the Service Act. Mm -hmm. What is happening now is issues of policy. The minister coming up with policies in terms of enforcement. I don't think it's a bad thing, because what we need to do and, and is we need to be creative with our immigration. Immigration is actually a national resource, is a public resource. If you look at some countries, they have a situation where if you can invest a certain amount of money into that country, they can make you a citizen. Say someone um, comes and invests 100 billion Kenyan shillings. We could say if you can invest 100 billion Kenyan shillings and you are a person of good standing, you know you are cleared in terms of security, we can make you a citizen. The UK is doing that, Malta is doing that, many countries are doing that. I don't think it's a bad thing. But we need to be careful as well. We cannot open our, our doors to everyone without checks. We need to check because at the end of the day, the only thing that is, um, is, is growing is the population. The, the space that we have as a country will never grow. So, so the more we are, you know, the smaller space we have for everyone. So we need to be selective in terms of would we allow to be here in the longer term, maybe as a citizen of this country or on a permanent residence. So that's what I think uh, needs to happen. Well, thank you so much, George Matimuse, for making time. You're an experienced immigration practitioner. Thank you for shedding light on this particular um, immigration um, scenario, which we really need to discuss more often given the 
timely sensitivity that it has. Thank you so much for making Thank time. You. We continue with Bottom Line Africa. We now take a short break, but I'll be back giving you more information about things you should know about the continent Africa. Do stay with us.